what is the time to kill supposed to be? So when we're talking about when the new radar, when the new scanning, when the new physicalized damage, when the item components, when the archetype switchover happens, when all is said and done, what are we aiming towards? What are we working towards here? What you just saw, unfortunately, is still not possible in Star Citizen. But there are many systems like engineering, components, armor, and physicalized damage that will make this all possible at some point. With 3.18, the game has taken a step closer to that goal. From now on, players will always have the chance to disable and board ships that they're fighting against. And while this seems focused on piracy or bounty hunting, there are actually quite a few ways it can be applied. This new feature is called Soft Death, and while it's one of the best parts of Alpha 318, in this video I'm going to explain just how much bigger Soft Death will be in the future. Thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. Soft death is basically a ship state reached when a critical component inside of a ship is destroyed. This is a separate state of destruction from your ship blowing up. Now before your ship dies, it will enter a disabled state in which it can be boarded and cargo can be taken, but things like gravity, MFDs, weapons, engines, and thrusters will no longer function. This can lead to some very immersive experiences at times when you just don't really expect it. And that's part of the real benefit of this feature. It picks up on one of our more common actions in the game, <laughs> dying. Along with persistent entity streaming, this gives every ship the chance to become an additional source of gameplay. From explorers and looters looking for a cool find, to salvagers trying out new functions in their cutting tools, to pirates looking to take some minerals from the local trader. This feature addition was a huge step towards a persistent universe that informs players of each other's actions, both past and present, and lets them act on them. It's also important to remember this is not just a player-focused addition. This is something that applies to every ship in the game, no matter who's flying. And already devs at the studio are looking into ways this mechanic can be built into missions going forward, requiring players to maybe investigate or retrieve something from their targets after taking them out. Features like this tend to really improve the game over time because they can be applied in so many different ways. Now, in theory, it is a really cool feature, and I can report that it can be pretty cool at times, but it could be improved. Now, as I mentioned, this is only a move towards the actual goal for ships of physicalized damage, which would ultimately lead to the fully simulated destruction of a ship, leaving it disabled and floating rather than blowing up. Now, while Soft Death takes a step towards this in some ways, it is still very easy to accidentally make a ship still blow up, which can come from applying additional damage to a ship after it's already reached the Soft Death state. That, plus there being no real indication of what's actually going on when you push a ship into Soft Death, means that a lot of players won't actually experience this for some time due to the tendency to just keep shooting until there's an explosion, get paid, and leave. And even if you aren't noticing those changes, because of the effects of these changes on the value of actual cargo in your ship, and especially with the next cargo refactor coming in bringing ship tractor beams with it, it's going to be much more important for players to start joining groups and taking escorts, because piracy will only continue to get more lucrative. It's key to remember that lawful and unlawful players and NPCs will all be populating the same spaces in this game. While Pyro is still on the horizon and reputation and security changes are lagging behind these game system updates, it's really going to come down to the players to decide how we handle the interactions between those two sides of the law. And so this is where Soft Death leaves us. One of the best feature additions to Star Citizen in a while, taking the most interesting parts of the game like tractor beams, ship combat, zero-g movement, and ship interiors, and combining them in a player-made set piece. It still has its issues, but it is just a stepping stone. The actual goal, what will lead us to truly systemic ship death, is physicalized damage. Uh, 
All right, let's let's go to another easy one. Physicalized damage. 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 Physical damage. Physicalized damage. Physicalized damage is kind of like persistent entity streaming, server meshing, or actor status system. A bunch of words that make sense combined in a way that may be less so. And it might sound like marketing speak, but it's actually a pretty nice feature. It is the physics-based damage system that will determine how any two items will interact with one another. Bullets to a ship hull, a claw to a ship hull, a bomb to a ship hull, lots of things in ship hulls. They're going to be colliding and using this system. But also, sniper bullets, cargo boxes, player armor, the scrap you salvage, and everything else that might bump into something else in the game will be determined by materials and the forces applied to them. But where is it? Well, the physics team is working on it, according to the last two years of video updates. Uh, it's, it's being worked on by the physics team at the moment. Um, physics guys are still working on it. They've and if you look at the progress tracker, you can indeed see the physics team was there, working on it for two years. But now, who knows? I can say when it is eventually applied, it will be done slowly, with only a small amount of ships at first, likely how the resource network will also be point. worked in. But we're already having discussion internally on what that means. So it's, it's like when we had um, a more recent one, the shield tech where it was using SDFs. We rolled that out for a few different ships and the community actually found some um, loopholes and bugs with it we kind of want to do that with physicalized damage. But we haven't really heard much about the system lately. It does seem to be reaching a milestone soon if it hasn't already, so I think it's a good time for us to get an update on this, because it brings with it a lot of interesting possibilities. One of the most exciting parts of this system is soft body deformation. Something that you see in other video games, but we're not really sure of how widespread the practice might be used in Star Citizen. We do know that it will be applied to ships of all sizes, though. It's going to be important for things like salvage and ship munching, or boarding ships through vulnerabilities using breaching charges. And those soft body deformations will be based on the type and location of materials used on your ship across all these other objects as well. We can actually see these materials starting to come into other parts of the game, with iron being introduced to the game in Alpha 319, specifically in anticipation of crafting. The same simulation that would place a UEC value on that iron is also going to require it to be shipped from and bought at certain places based on where that iron is needed in the game. So Orison might be ordering and paying for more iron than Microtech to use in their ships. And the iron in those ships from Crusader might make them less protective against ballistics than an Anvil or Aegis ship, but definitely more so than a Drake ship. And yes, that actually might be a thing in the future. And it's because these materials will have their own values, such as density and tensile strength. And those values are going to be very important in the game. For instance, bullet penetration in both ship and FPS scenarios will depend on the particulars of the bullet being shot and the material that it's being shot at, including both the velocity and mass of that projectile. Now, as I just mentioned, the obvious application of this everyone is thinking of is the infamous scrappy armor of Drake ships. But a more interesting hypothetical application for this would be the thicker armor you find on capital ships compared to large or medium ships, allowing them to possibly shrug off those small size 1 or size 2 ballistic repeaters, but receive some proper damage from an actual ballistic cannon of proper size. This complication of gameplay with ballistics has already begun to be experimented with, some might say prematurely, but will definitely be a much bigger topic in the future when capital ships are starting to be brought into the game. Now, another key example of these values making a difference gameplay-wise is item detachment. Player's method of shooting or pulling an item or component off of a ship. They've got a little like soft body deformation tests on vehicles, which we were looking at um, replacing the hit point based part detachments with uh, material based and tensile strength detachments. So rather than you just depleting the parts of the wing down to to zero health and they fall off it's you hitting it and the, the tensile strength of the joint is uh, reduced to the point that it would break off naturally. This is important for things like repair, trading, ship customization, and piracy. And recently in monthly reports we've been learning more about item detachment capabilities due to the tractor beams that are being worked on for ships. For more monthly updates on upcoming features I'll leave that playlist link down below for you to catch up on. Or you can just subscribe, come back for more later.
All of this bullet penetration and item removal that's coming from physicalized damage is actually set to interact with another major ship system set to be implemented soon, the resource network. I have a few different videos going over the complications of this system, and there are a couple on the Star Citizen official channel, but the important thing to know is that it drives your power, life support, gravity, and weapon systems. Through a network of fuses, terminals, and components, your ships will depend on multiple moving parts to run at peak efficiency. Of course, the smaller your ship, the less of a problem this is, and you can always just ignore these systems. But considering bullet penetration, item removal, and physicalized damage as a whole, you're gonna be vulnerable regardless. And if you do find yourself getting into capital ship gameplay in the future, serving aboard a ship that gets shot through, you'll have to contend with the room losing pressure, possible explosive decompression, or possible damage to components that drive the systems on the massive ships. Strategically placed shots could render entire sections of ships inoperable or shields down until an engineer can get to work on that spot. This is the Star Trek dream many players join the game for, and the big excuse that players like myself will use for never flying ships because we're just not that great at it. But we'll have to see if these two systems can meld together, especially considering how many unique ships there are in the game. But if they do work, this will make gameplay on capital ships and even some of the large ships something to behold. And finally, there's also ship repair, another major profession that was halfway introduced with salvage but in the future will require a lot more cutting, dismantling, and manipulating. All of these features and professions are centering around just two things, our ships and the components they carry. From the economy to the battlefield, Star Citizen revolves around ships, and they're seeing some major systems come online as we've seen in this video and others in the past couple months. If you want to keep up with all these developments, I make weekly videos covering Star Citizen and the occasional other space games. I also host podcasts, gameplay, and other videos on my second channel, Space Tomato 2. And before you go, this channel is about to reach 50,000 subscribers. We want to say thanks and throw another giveaway to gift out two copies of the game with one of two Drake ships, the Cutlass or the Cutter, both supplied by CIG. All you have to do to enter is subscribe and hit the link below for additional options. On top of that, as always, I'll be hiding extra codes throughout my videos that can give you more points towards the giveaway. There will be two winners, and they'll be announced the day after we hit 50k. Whether you enter or not, I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll catch you in the next.